Sister Simone Campbell of Nuns on the Bus, nunsonthebus.com, on the line with us, live from the DNC. Sister Campbell, welcome. Oh, glad to be with you. I have to tell you, I I watched your presentation, uh, was it yesterday? Yep. It, yeah. Last night. I, I'm sorry, I'm totally losing <laughs> I know. time. I mean, it's, it's just... It's hard to keep track. <laughs> it is It is totally gone. And I thought it was absolutely brilliant, your presentation oh, you. to the DNC. It was absolutely brilliant about the, the, the essence of the morality of you know, Catholic morality not being reflected by Paul Ryan's budget and by the Republican agenda and and clearly being reflected by the values that are that are there in the you know that are there in the DNC to a large extent. Um, I, I let me let you riff on that rather than me. <laughs> this is your topic. Well, it, it was totally an honor last night to be able to speak to the DNC about the people that we met on the bus and to bring them into this room. I mean, so often the delegates can get so involved in the, you know, the nitty gritty of politics, but I think it's really important that we remember that it's folks at the margins of our society that are suffering the most. Folks who can't put food on the table because either they've lost their jobs or hours have been cut back. I, I, Margaret was one of the most heartbreaking stories for me because she died because she didn't have access to health care after she lost her job. I mean, it's these folks that we need to remember when we talk policy. It's not just some academic exercise that gets scored by the Congressional Budget Office or, or just party gain, but it's, it's really about lifting up our nation, being we the people, the 100 percent, and that's who I was able to speak for last night. What an honor. What an amazing experience it's been. I have a friend who's who's a very active uh, Catholic and also and a, and a very active Democrat and also uh, pro-life. Absolutely. And, and that's kind of a middle position. But it seems like you, you I, I look at the at the uh, Supreme Court. We have five Catholics on the Supreme Court. They're all they're, they are the hard right wingers. There are not all of them. They're, they're, you've got the Paul Ryans of the world. There are a lot of Catholics who are who are just taking these very, you know, and, and, and uh, many of them in the media who are taking these very hard right-wing positions, you know, the, the Pat Buchanan's of the world. And, and then there are the, you know, there's traditionally been the social progressive Catholics, uh, the, the, you know, from Father Berrigan, well, you know, going back hundreds, going back thousands of years. <laughs> right and, to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, the first liberal. And, and I'm just curious if you could illuminate those of us. I, did, I was not raised Catholic. I'm not Catholic. So I, I, you know, I, I see it from the, from the... I was raised a Methodist. I'm, right, I see it from right. the outside, not the inside. Um, what is the, the, the schism or the battle? What is the nature of that difference between those different types of Catholics politically and socially? I think that's a really important question, and I think one of the one of the differences is it seems to go to the issue of wealth, how wealthy folks are, and and the, the wealthier folks get, the more established they are, they have a tendency to think that they can take care of themselves, and they lose that the the gospel is about Jesus saying that we're community, that we're in this together, where two or three are gathered. That's where that's where Christ is. And I, I think another thing is, is that as you get more wealthy, you have a tendency not to experience what it is to struggle every day and to have a question about, can you keep a roof over your family's head? Or can you really take care of each other? But the other piece that I think is so critical is that we in our nation have started just yelling at each other and calling that political discourse. And the, the one of the women I talked about last night was a middle class woman, maybe upper middle class, I don't know, in her 30s, who asked us for people that she could talk to, names of people she could talk to, because the anger, the yelling that is masquerading as political values is really undermining the democracy of our nation. And so I think there's a lot of ways where the political game has become more important than solving our political problems. And what I'm trying to do is, what we at Network, our organization, are trying to do is to lift up the fact that the 100% needs us to come together to speak about values. I, I am pro-life, but there's a whole lot more to life than just the, the issues of abortion yeah. and euthanasia. So uh, we've got to be able to talk to each other, though. Let's have a sane conversation about these issues. Let's not just yell. That's yeah. what we're about. Yeah. And and so you think that that, uh, that as people become more affluent, they tend to become harder, as it were, on social well, issues? Uh, yeah, I do, because I think that it's harder and harder for them to have experiences of the real-life struggles. Yeah, especially if they're multi-generationally affluent. Absolutely. And and what we saw on the bus, I expected that on the bus trip, which we did to, you know, nine states, was to experience in low-income communities that it would be hard for people to 
um, come together, that that would be the place we'd experience pain. But you know what I found? Every, in the low-income community, we found beauty, we found support, we found that sisters create relationships, create community. But it was in the middle class and upper middle class communities that we found loneliness, fear, isolation, and a real hunger to try to communicate. It's those are the folks we're trying to speak to. We can be in this together. It, the, the love of God spills out all over, and that's what Catholic sisters do, is share that love. So I'm trying to share the love around. Good on you. That is marvelous. Um, nunsonthebus.com. We're talking with Sister Simone Campbell, uh, nuns on the bus, who spoke to the DNC last night about this uh, trip across across the United States. Uh, was it eight cities? Oh, no, 32 cities. 32 nine, cities. Nine states, 2,700 miles. Oh, wow. That's, I know. That's, that's a big That's point. all. That's, that's a big <laughs> And are you continuing? Uh, what's happening is, is that it's catching fire. And uh, we've got a group that's doing it in Missouri. We have a group that's uh, doing it in New York State. We have there another group. Other groups of nuns? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we've, we've developed a, a protocol for if you want to be a nun on the bus. And we've developed magnets that go on your car door, which uh -huh. has the design of the bus. And so anyone that signs up for our five uh, little rules of the road, you have to have a nun. You have to speak civilly. You have to be about the poor. And especially the expansion of Medicaid and the pushback against the Ryan budget and on our website you can see it and uh, if you want to join us as nuns on the bus you have to have at least one nun with you so uh, but we're going to do uh, uh, the New York people on September 24th I understand are going to do nuns on the ferry on the Staten Island ferry because what wow. we realize what we realize is is that the the Ryan budget is in never never land yeah yeah, it is, it is fundamentally, well, it's nothing that Jesus would recognize. Let's just say that. Absolutely. He'd be shocked. Yes. Sister Campbell, thank you so much for, for the extraordinary work that you're doing. You're changing the world. You're, oh. you're genu genuinely doing God's work. Thank you very it's much. It's a gift of the Spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nunsonthebus.com. Check it out. We'll be right back.